Today I'm editing the heck out of someone else's image. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nays. You can find me on Twitter at AKNaser. You can find me on Flurn five days a week because we make these videos five days a week. Flurn's a family dedicated to help you guys get better at Photoshop, photography, and life. And today is no exception. We got some announcements. Um, congrats to Dylan Strickland, by the way. Um, we're going to be editing your image today. We talked last week about how we're going to be editing more community members, family members, photos. So we're editing Dylan's image today, and tomorrow we're editing someone else's from the family, which is very, very cool. Congrats to Brian Fisher who won the Flurn t-shirt contest. Your design is awesome. We're doing some finalization together now and it's gonna be up in the Flurn store very soon. If you guys haven't checked it out, be sure to do so in the link below. Brian, you're awesome. You're awesome. We've got our new Flurn Pro that released today, guys. You can check it out right up above. It's the Phoenix. It's with feathers all over here. It's just awesome, awesome tutorial on like adding textures and colors and all kinds of craziness and making an image very, very much different from the start image and in, in my opinion, way, way better. Today what we're doing is editing Dylan Strickland's image. This is a new section of Flurn where basically people send us images and we edit your guys' images. And this is a very, very cool image. We're gonna help uh, solve some of the big problems that are going on with this image and it's probably gonna help you with some of the problems that are happening with yours as well. All right, let's get into it. The first thing, um, Dylan, by the way, got an $800 trespassing ticket for getting this image. So, um, right on. I've done it before too, it totally sucks. But if it's worth a good picture, then uh, I guess it's worth it. We're gonna solve some of the problems, and before we start working on some of the problems that are going on with this image, I mean, there's nothing like horrible here, it's just some of the stuff that most people deal with with their images. The big thing here is exposure. Um, you can see this area here is like really pretty bright. It's too bright in my opinion, it's borderline overexposed, and this area right up here is definitely overexposed. This area here is really underexposed. So it's a really tough thing because cameras aren't very good at capturing like a huge dynamic range. You either get like overexposed or underexposed or sometimes you even get both. But luckily you can fix both of those in Photoshop. We're gonna add some light rays and stuff like that and uh, add some texture to this as well. So if you guys are curious, this is uh, about what we're gonna look like in the end, fixing all those things. All right, so the first thing I wanna take care of is the lighter area. And to do that, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and I'm gonna go up to your two levels. Now, when you're working with levels, I wanna make this lighter area quite a bit darker. So I'm looking at the light area, but I don't really wanna just grab my RGB. If you grab your output levels here, what happens is you do wind up darkening things out, but look how like gray that looks. It just, it looks pretty bad most of the time because that's, it's like a gray, th this color doesn't exist. It's like if you took a bright blown out window and made it like, you know, gray, it's like, gray and blown out don't go together. Like there should be detail, there should be texture, and there should be color here if it's gonna be that dark. So that's something that you could really have to watch out for. Um, how you can do that is instead of just taking your RGB slider and dragging that down, you can do individual colors. Um, so we're gonna start with red, we'll just drag it to about there. This is a little bit harder, but it's gonna give you a better result in the end. Then we'll go to green, and then I'm gonna go to blue. And what this is gonna do, you can see, instead of just giving you a gray, you can change the levels of each of these, giving you like a little bit more of a yellow color or more of a bluer color. So it is still kind of like coming down on the spectrum. You can see it's much darker in those highlights, but instead of looking like that gray, it's, it's looking just a little bit more real because it's got color in it, which is exactly what you want. Now, one thing is because we brought that color down, it's affecting the entire image and we really only want this to be visible where the lights are. So I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick. Um, what you can do, you can go on your layer mask to your levels adjustment layer. You can use curves or whatever you want to. I like levels. Um, I'm gonna click on image and then I'm gonna go down to apply image. Okay, so image and then apply image. And here are the settings you guys want for apply image. Basically what apply image just does is it takes like a snapshot of whatever's in your image and it applies it to the layer mask. So in this case, if you have like a lighter area and a darker area, you can have that be visible or not visible on a layer mask. So what we're gonna choose is, I'm gonna choose my background because this is what we actually wanna use for the layer mask. And I don't wanna have invert on. We wanna leave that off. Multiply is good, opacity is 100%. And here's your preview. So this would be like the before and the after. Okay, let's hit okay. And then I'll show you guys, hold down alter option to click on that layer mask. And now this is what the actual layer mask looks like. It looks like a snapshot of your image. But the cool thing is, is layer masks where they're light make things visible and where they're dark make things invisible. So like this, because we wanted to make the lights darker, this is exactly what it did. It made my lights darker with the levels and it only made it visible there where that layer mask is, which is perfect. All right, 
I'm gonna bring down the opacity of that just a little bit and uh, we're gonna add some texture in here in just a minute, but first I wanna do the same thing with the darks. So we're gonna grab an adjustment layer now. We'll just do the same thing. We'll go to levels. And this time I'm gonna grab here at this end instead of um, here at this end. So we'll start off with red. We'll just drag that up a little bit. All right, and then green, somewhere right about there. And then blue. And you can kind of just totally choose like where you want your lights and your darks to be. It's, it's up to you. All right, that looks pretty good. And now what we're gonna do is on this layer mask again, we're gonna go to image down here to apply image. And here I am gonna choose invert because now we want this to only be visible where the darks are. So we do want it to be inverted and I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so we can see that lightens our darks up quite a bit and this darkens our lights up. Now with these, I also colored it. You can see like it's not just lighter or darker versions of that same color. I gave it a little color and I did that mostly for style, but it's totally up to you whether you wanna do it or not. So what we have here is this is like very, very contrasty to start with, very light and very dark. Now, after these are applied, we have a lot less contrast, but we have detail in the highlight and the shadow area. If you do wanna bring back a little bit more contrast, which I like a little bit more than this, you can do that just by lowering the opacity of these layers, and you still have your contrast, but you have detail in your lights and your darks, which is perfect. All right, the next thing I wanna do on a new layer, we're just going to make a, let's see how I wanna do this. All right, I wanna make a stamp visible. I'm gonna hit Shift Command Option E, and that just makes a copy of everything you see. All right, now we're gonna use our, level, our lasso tool. So L for the lasso tool. And I'm just gonna make a selection right here around this texture on the wall. All right, there we go. And then I'm gonna hit Command J and that's just gonna duplicate whatever's in that selection I just made to a new layer. All right, now I don't need this layer, the stamp visible, so I can just delete it, get rid of it. Basically, I just wanted this texture, same thing that was on the wall, on a new layer. All right, we're gonna rotate that around and I'm going to just hold down Command and click on some of these corners here and kind of stretch it out a little bit. The reason I'm rotating it around is I don't want it to look exactly like what's going on over here. I want it to look different. All right, there we go. Now, you can choose to do this in a number of ways, how you want this to be visible. Um, let's just use the same method we used earlier with like the figuring out what we actually want the um, like, uh, <laughs> we can use the apply image for this layer mask as well. So if I hold down alter option and click on this layer mask, that's pretty much what we want the layer mask to look like. Lighter over here and darker, you know, in this areas. So if I wanted to just hold down alter option and copy this over from this layer to that layer, it would just copy the layer mask over. All right, that's perfect. So that's showing up right over there. Now all I have to do is take my paintbrush and paint black on my layer mask just a little bit and clean it up. There we go, maybe straight up there. All right, and just kind of fade it out there just a little bit. That's looking good. So we're able to copy the texture from the lower area of the photo to the upper area, making it really not look like it's blown out at all. I'm gonna just lower the opacity just a little bit. All right, so not only did we fix the highlights and the shadows, but Areas, the problem with blown out areas really is that there's no detail in them. So if you can add back even just a little bit of detail like we did here, it's gonna look way, way better. Okay, the next thing I wanna do, and um, this is actually a really cool trick. I think you guys are gonna like this. I'm gonna grab some light rays in here and I'm gonna hold down my brush tool and hold down alter option, sorry, pick your brush tool, hold alter option and get a color that you like. Something like that looks pretty good. Let's just choose a nice hard edge brush. All right, and I'm gonna just paint some of these little guys over here. These just totally random balls of light color. This is very technical. <laughs> there we go. That looks great. So we're just painting those over and right, that's basically what they look like over here. Okay, now we're gonna apply a blur to these and that's gonna make them look like they're actually light rays. So we're gonna go to filter, I'm gonna go to blur and I'm gonna go to radial blur. Okay, now we wanna choose a blur that's going to make them kinda of like look like they're coming down that path. So you can choose where you want your blur center to be, and in this case we want it to be like the top right. So we're gonna to go to the top right and use a large amount. All right, we'll hit okay and see what that looks like. You can't get a preview of this till it actually does what you think it's gonna do, so oftentimes it's like you don't really know what it's gonna look like till it's already done it, but um, we can see there that's what that looks like basically. It's coming down. Now, if you hit Command F, it's gonna do the same thing over again. So it's just gonna blur again in the exact same way. All right, that looks great. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of 
light there and I'm gonna put a little bit of light in between there we go and we'll put a little bit of light there okay and then I'm gonna grab my eraser tool and I'm gonna kind of erase some of the light out from some of these places and the reason I'm doing this is it's gonna make it look like let's say command F it's gonna make it look like the lights actually interacting with our subject like you know some of these areas are like catching light and not allowing the light to actually come through all right just like that and if I just erase like areas like our head there we go and hit command F one more time it's gonna look like her head is actually blocking the light and the light rays are gonna come shining past through there perfect so it looks a lot more real um, and that's obviously the point <laughs> whenever you're doing something like this all right um, what we're gonna do is I want to just define this border a little bit better because it's kind of leaking out across there you can see it's getting up there and stuff like that so we're gonna put a layer mask on there hit command I on the layer mask all right this is so much fun I love editing other people's images by the way because it's not any pressure and other people take so many cool photos <laughs> I don't have to edit my photos it's awesome all right and then I'm just going to click a Gaussian blur on that layer mask real quick to give it a little bit of blur make it look like it's kind of coming through there all right there we go so now we have some light rays coming down through there that look like they're actually interacting with our subject which is perfect all right we're gonna lower the opacity of that just a little bit and then here at the very end just because I kind of want to I'm gonna grab a levels adjustment layer and we're just gonna do some color to this image because I think it's a great image and it lends itself to like some fashion coloring so we're gonna go to our levels I'm gonna go to my blue channel pull up my blues a little bit and maybe some yellows in there um, let's see stick some greens in my darks as well all right and let's see we'll keep the reds out there we go I think that looks pretty good and I'm just gonna lower the opacity a bit and that kind of gives it more of that fashion look where the darks aren't really that they're not black they're a little bit more like the very desaturated teal is what I would call it all right guys and that's this image generally it's just shift click and hit command G on those so those the before and the after you can see it didn't take too long and we totally fixed a lot of the problems here making the image much more dynamic and acceptable for use in print and other things like that so whew, that's that guys thanks so much for sending these in I can't wait I'm gonna have so much fun editing your guys's images don't forget we have a Florin Pro that we released today it's totally awesome and we have a new contest it's a Flurn Facebook contest on editing one of your images for a pro tutorial in which we'll pay you and all kinds of cool stuff and you can find more information on that below you can email your submissions to contest <laughs>